Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, book four, Prince Caspian, chapter 12. Sorcery and Sudden Vengeance Meanwhile, Trumpkin and the two boys arrived at the dark little stone archway which led in to the inside of the mound, and two sentinel badgers the white patches on their cheeks were all Edmund could see of them, leapt up with bared teeth and asked them in snarling voices, Who goes there? Trumpkin, said the dwarf, bringing the high king of Narnia out to the far east, uh, out of the far path. The badgers nosed at the boy's hand. At last, they said, at last. Give us a light, friend, said Trumpkin. The badgers found a torch just inside the ark, and Peter lit it and handed it to Trumpkin. The DLF had better lead, he said. We don't know our way about this place. Trumpkin took the torch and went ahead into the dark tunnel. It was a cold, black, musty place, with an occasional bat fluttering in the torchlight, and plenty of cobwebs. The boys, who had been mostly in the open air since that morning at the railway station, felt as if they were going into a trap or a prison. I say, Peter, whispered Edmund, look at those carvings on the walls. Don't they look old? And yet we're older than that. When we were last here, they hadn't been made. Yes, said Peter, that makes one think. The dwarf went on ahead and then turned to the right, and then to the left, and then down some steps, and then to the left again. Then at last they saw a light ahead. Light from under the light from under a door. And now for the first time they heard voices, for they had come to the door of the central chamber. The voices inside were angry ones. Someone was talking so loudly that the approach of the boys and the dwarf had not been heard. I don't like the sound of that, whispered Trumpkin to Peter. Lis let's listen for a moment. All three stood perfectly still on the outside of the door. You know well enough, said a voice. That's the king, whispered Trumpkin. Have you forgotten that Miraz fell upon us almost before Trumpkin had gone, and we were fighting for our lives for the space of three hours or and more? I blew it when I first had a breathing space. I'm not likely to forget it, came the angry voice. When my dwarf bore the brunt of the attack, and one in five of them fell, that's Nickabrick whispered Trumpkin. For shame, dwarf, came a thick voice. Truffle hunters, said Trumpkin. We all did as much as the dwarf and none more than the king. Tell that tale your own way, for I care, for all I care, whispered Nickabrick. But whether it was that the horn was blown too late, or whether there was no magic in it, no help has come. You, you great clerk, you master magician, you know all. <laughs> Are you still asking us to hang our hopes on Aslan and King Peter and all the rest of it? I must confess. I cannot deny it. 
that I am deeply disappointed in the result of the operation, came the answer. That'll be Dr. Cornelius, said Frumkin. To speak plainly, said Nickerbrick, your wallet's empty, your eggs addled, your fish uncaught, your promises broken. Stand aside and let others work. And that is why the help will come, said Truffle Hunter. I stand by Aslan. Have patience like us be. The help will come. It may even be now at the door. Pah! gnarled Nickerbrick. You badgers would have us wait till the sky falls and we can all catch larks. I tell you we can't wait. Food is running short. We lose more than we can afford at any at every encounter. Our followers are slipping away. And why? asked Truffle Hunter. I'll tell you why. Because it is noised among them that we have called on the kings of old, and the kings of old have not answered. The last words Trumpkin spoke before he went, and went most likely to his death, were, If you must blow the horn, do not let the army know why you blow it, or what you hope from it. But that same evening, everyone seemed to know. You better have shoved your grey snout in a hornet's nest, badger, than suggest that I am the blab, said Nickerbrick. Take it back or... Oh, stop it, both of you, said King Cassian. I want to know what it is that Nickerbrick keeps on hinting we should do. But before that, I want to know who those strangers. Uh, I want to know who those two strangers are whom he has brought into our council and who stand there with their ears open and their mouth shut. They are friends of mine, said Nickerbrick. And what better right have you yourself to be here? Than that you are a friend of Trumpkins and the Badgers. And what right has that old doctor in the black gown to be here, except that he is your friend? Why am I to be the only one who can't bring him his friend? His Majesty is the king to whom you have sworn allegiance, said Truffle Hunter sternly. Court manners, court manners, sneered Nickerbrick. But in this hole we may talk plainly, you know, and he knows, that this Talmarine boy will be king of nowhere and nobody in a week unless we can help him out of the trap in which he sits. Perhaps, says Dr. Cornelius, your friends would like to speak for themselves. You there, who and what are you? Worshipful Master Doctor, came a thin, whining voice. So please you, I am only a poor old woman, I am, and very obliged to his worshipful dwarfship for his friendship. I'm sure his majesty, bless his handsome face, has no need to be afraid of an old woman that's nearly doubled up with, <laughs> with the rheumatics and hasn't two sticks to put under her. Kettle. I have some poor little skill, not like yours, Master Doctor, of course, in small spells and cantrips. 
that I'd be glad to use against our enemies if it was agreeable to all concerned. For I hate them. Oh yes, no one hates better than me. That is almost interesting and uh, satisfactory, said Dr. Cornelius. I think I now know what you are, madam. Perhaps your other friend, Nickerbrick, would give some account of himself? A dull, grey voice at which Peter's flesh crept replied, I am hunger, I am thirst. Where I bite, I hold till I die. And even after death, they must cut out my mouthful from my enemy's body and bury it with me. I can last, no, I can, I can fast a hundred years and not die. I can lie a hundred nights on the, on the ice and not freeze. I can drink a river of blood and not thirst. Show me your enemies. And it is in the presence of these two that you wish to disclose your plan? Asked Cassie, said Cassian. Yes, said Nickerbrick. And by their help that I mean to execute it. There was a minute or two during which Trumpkin and the boys could hear Cassian and his two friends speaking in low voices, but could not make out what they were saying. Then Cassian spoke aloud. Well, Nickerbrick, he said, we will hear your plan. There was a pause, so long that the boys began to wonder if Nickerbrick was ever going to begin. When he did, it was in a lower voice as he himself did not much like what he was saying. All said and done, he muttered. None of us knows the truth about the ancient days in Narnia. Trumpkin believed none of the stories. I was ready to put him to the trial. We tried first the horn, and it had, and it had failed. If there ever was a High King Peter, and a Queen Susan, and a King Edmund, and a Queen Lucy, then either they have not heard us, or they cannot come, or they are our enemies, or they are on the way, put in Truffle Hunter. You can go on saying that till King Miraz has fed us all to his dogs. As I was saying, we have tried one link in the chain of old legends, and it has done us no good. Well, but when your thought breaks, you draw your dagger. The stories tell of other powers beside the ancient kings and queens. How if we could call them up? If you mean Aslan, said Truffle Hunter, it's all one calling on him and on the kings. They were his servants. If he will not send them, but I make no doubt he will, he is more likely to come himself. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. More likely to come himself? No, you're right there, said Nickerbrick. Aslan and the kings go together. Either Aslan is dead, or he is not on our side. Or else something stronger than himself keeps him back. And if he did come, how do we know he'll be our friend? He was not always a good friend to dwarves, by all that's, by all that's told. Not even to all beasts. Ask the wolves. And anyway, he was in Narnia only once that I ever heard of and he didn't stay long. You may drop Aslan out of the reckoning. I was thinking of someone else. There was no answer, and for a few minutes it was so still that Edmund could hear the wheezy and snuffling breath of the badger. Who do you, me who do you mean? said Cassian at last. I mean a power so much greater than Aslan's that it held Narnia spellbound for years and years. 
if the stories are true. The White Witch, cry three voices all at once. And from the noise, Peter guessed that the three people had leapt to their feet. Yes, said Mr. Briggs very slowly and distinctly. I mean the witch. Sit down again. Don't all take fright at the same time as if you were children. We want power and we want a power that will be on our side. As for power, do not the story say that the witch defeated Aslan and bound him and killed him on that very stone, which is over there, just beyond the light? But they also say that he came to life again, said the badger sharply. Yes, they say, answered Mr. Briggs, but you'll notice that we hear precious little about anything he did afterwards. He just fades out of the story. You, How do you explain that, if he really came to life? Isn't it much more likely that he didn't, and that the stories are, and, and that the stories say nothing more about him because there was nothing more to say? He established the kings and queens, said Caspian. A king who has just won a great battle can usually establish himself without the help of a performing lion, said Mr. Briggs. There was a fierce growl, probably from Truffle Hunter. And anyway, Mr. Briggs continued, what came of the kings and their reign? They faded too, but it's very different with the witch. They say she ruled for a hundred years, a hundred years of winter. There's power if you like. There's something practical. But heaven and earth, said the king, haven't we always been told that she was the worst enemy of all? Wasn't she a tyrant ten times worse than Mirad? Perhaps, said Mr. Brick in a cold voice. Perhaps she was for you humans, if there were any of your, if there were any of you in those days. Perhaps she was for some of the beasts. She stamped out the beavers, I dare say. At least there were there are none of them in Narnia now. But she got on all right with us dwarfs. I'm a dwarf, and I stand by my own people. We're not afraid of the witch. But she joined with us, said Truffle Hunter. Yes, and a lot of good it has done my people so far, snapped Nickerbrick. Who is sent on all the dangerous raids? The dwarfs. Who goes short when the rations fail? The dwarfs. Who? Lies. All lies, said the badger. And so, said Nickerbrick, whose voice was, had now rose to a scream, If you can't help my people, I'll go to someone who can. Is this open treason, dwarf? asked the king. Put that sword back in its sheath, Caspian, said Nickerbrick. Murder a council, eh? Is that your game? Don't be fool enough to try it. Do you think I'm afraid of you? There's three on my side and three on yours. Come on then, snarled Truffle Hunter, but he was immediately interrupted. Stop, 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 said Dr. Cornelius. You go on too fast. The witch is dead. All the stories agree on that. What does Nickerbrick mean by calling on the witch? That grey and terrible voice, which had spoken only once before, said, Oh, oh, is she? 
And then the shrill whining voice began. Oh, bless his heart, his, his dear little majesty needn't mind about the white lady. That's what we call her being dead. The worshipful master doctor is only making game of a poor old woman like me. When he says that, sweet master doctor, learned master doc, learned master doctor, who ever heard of a witch that really died? You can always get them back. Call her up, said the grey voice. We are all ready. Draw the circle. Prepare the blue fire. Above the steadily increasing growl of the badger and Cornelius's sharp, What? rose the voice of King Caspian like thunder. So that is your plan, Nickabrick? Black sorcery? And the calling up of an accursed ghost? And I see who your companions are. A hag and a werewolf. The next minute or so was very confused. There was an animal roaring, a clash of steel, and the boys and Trumpkin rushed in. Had a glimpse of a horrible grey gaunt creature, half man and half wolf, in the very act of leaping upon the, on a boy about his own age, and Edmund saw a badger and a dwarf. rolling on the floor in a sort of cat fight. Trumpkin found himself face to face with the hag. Her nose and chin stuck out like a pair of nutcrackers. Her dirty grey hair was flying about her face. And she had just got Dr Cornelius by the throat. At one flash of Trumpkin's sword, her head rolled on the floor. Then the light was knocked over and it was all swords, teeth, claws, fists and boots for about 60 seconds, then silence. Are you all right, Ed? I, I think so, panted Edmund. I've got that brute knickerbrick, but he's still alive. Wait some water bottles, came an angry voice. It's me you're sitting on. Get off. You're like a young elephant. Sorry, DLF, said Edmund. Is that better? Oh, no, bellowed Trumpkin. You're putting your boot in my mouth. Go away. Is King Caspian anywhere? asked Peter. I'm here, said a rather faint voice. Something bit me. They all heard the noise of someone striking a match. It was Edmund. The little flame showed his face, looking pale and dirty. He blundered about for a little, found the, found the candle. They were no longer using the lamp, for they had run out of oil. Set it on the table and lit it. When the flame rose, clear, Several people scrambled to their feet. Six faces blinked at one another in the candlelight. We don't seem to have any enemies left, said Peter. There's the hag dead. He turned his eyes quickly away from her. And Nickerbrick dead too. And I suppose this is that this thing is a werewolf. It's so long since I've seen one. Wolf's head and man's body. That means he was just turning from man into wolf at the moment he was killed. And you, I suppose, are King Caspian. Yes, said the other boy. But I've no idea who you are. 
It's the High King, King Peter, said Trumpkin. Your Majesty is very welcome, said Caspian. And so is your Majesty, said Peter. I haven't come to take your place, you know, but to put you into it. Your Majesty, said another voice at Peter's elbow. He turned and found himself face to face with the badger. Peter leaned forward, put his arms round the beast, and kissed the furry head. It wasn't a girlish thing for him to do, because he was the High King. Best of badgers, he said, you never doubted us, all through. No credit to me, your majesty, said Truffle Hunter. I'm a beast and we don't change. I'm a badger, what's more, and we hold on. I'm sorry for Nickabrick, said Caspian. So he hated me from the first moment he saw me. He had gone sour, start. He gone sour inside from long suffering and hating. If we had won quickly, he might have become a good dwarf in the days of peace. I don't know which of us killed him. I'm glad of that. You're bleeding, said Peter. Yes, I'm bitten, said Caspian. It was that wolf thing. Cleaning and bandaging the wound took a long time, and when it was done, Trumpkin, the clean, yeah, Trumpkin said, Now, before everything else, we want some breakfast. Yeah. But not here, said Peter. No, said Caspian with a shudder. And we must send someone to take away the bodies. Let the vermin be flung into a pit, said Peter. But the dwarf we will give to his people to be buried in their own fashion. They breakfasted at last in another of the dark cellars of Aslan's house. It was not such a breakfast as they would have chosen. For Caspian and Cornelius were thinking of venison pasties, and Peter and Edmund of buttered eggs and hot coffee. But what everyone got was a little bit of cold bear meat out of the boys' pockets, a lump of hard cheese, an onion, and a mug of water. But from the way they fell, to anyone would have supposed it was delicious. And that was chapter 12 of Prince Caspian. Next time, chapter 13, The High King in Command. Until then, thanks for watching.